Halo Infinite's recent update, Content Update 31, is either amazing or detrimental depending on where you live. Let me explain. 343's latest update brings much needed changes and additions, like new squad battle maps, nerfs and buffs to the sandbox. I mean, I, I don't want to say it after like the first game on, but I mean, I'm just saying, I feel like the commando might be back. New anti-cheat, and most importantly, an entirely new networking model that finally ends desync. Though, there is a cost. Something clearly needs to change because a shot like this should have landed. So in this video, I'll be sharing the community experience as well as my own with this latest update. So then you can judge whether or not it's a good time to jump back in to play Halo Infinite. If you've played Halo Infinite's new update, let us know in the comments what your experience has been. And also a subscribe and like is always appreciated, but let's get right into those details. So first, let's start off with the big ticket item, the new networking model, which completely removes desync from the game and fix a lot of issues about being shot around the corners. There have been some mixed reviews about how this new update has resonated with the community, but let me show you some examples here. Here's Lucid, a pro player, talking about it. How's it feeling? It's pretty damn good, Joel. Yeah, even the weird, like, little quirks in the game that I feel right now are just like, I don't know, dude, they just don't feel comparable to the shit that we just played on for the last two and a half years. Shot reg and everything feels really f good right now and i will say from my experience playing in north america with this game right now with the recent update it has been feeling very similar very good it's been feeling crispy things are hitting properly i'm not getting shot around corners or anything like that though apparently if you're living outside of any highly populated areas of playing halo well, this new update is more detrimental than positive for you. Popular content creator Mint Bliss, I'm sure you guys all know him from the channel here, said consistently seen online that for anyone outside of America, the new Halo Infinite update is horrible on high ping. For me, all I say is that the skewer is unusable, like completely and utterly broken right now. Aiming is definitely off, but I like the physics so much more now. One of the all-time great players, Ogre One, also said that the update feels absolutely terrible. I don't know why I expected and hoped for anything else. Unfortunate. Also, keep in mind that Ogre One does live outside of the US. I believe he lives in Australia, so it seems like people outside of North America are having issues with this newest update. Mainly because with this new networking model, it also removes lag compensation, which is the reason why you get shot around corners. 343 talked about this specifically in a blog update years ago, explaining the experience of people having when it comes to desync and lag compensation, which are two very different things. For example, they showed a shooter's view with comes to zero millisecond ping. You see the character right there and also the target from their point of view, that's what they see. But now when you add in say 33 milliseconds of lag, this is what you see, but this is what the shooter actually sees. So if you turn up that example a little bit more with 150 millisecond ping, this is what you see, but this is what the shooter on that same connection sees. And in that blog post, 343 states that they are favoring the shooter when it comes to networking. So that's where lag compensation comes in. So if you're playing Halo Infinite now outside of North America, which is the most popular area to play right now, if you're like playing in Australia or even in Europe, you might want to start searching on strict connection base rather than expanded. So then you can actually have good games. A major thing that's been removed when it comes to the networking model is also the jitteriness that happens with the game. If you guys drive vehicles before this update, you'll see sometimes it'll be like some kind of jittery movements that will happen, making the vehicle not very useful or fun to use. And also just general movement where you can kind of just teleport around awkwardly in random moments. Just not a smooth experience. Well, this new networking removes that issue. The movement god himself, Milkway, showcases when he put himself at 400 millisecond ping, he's still able to move around fluidly. If he was on the previous networking model, he'd be teleporting back, he'd be having some weird jittery action happen. Not anymore with this new networking model because there's no lag compensation and desync has been completely removed from the game, which again, a more local area is great. When it comes to having higher pings though, playing against players, you'll be having some issues. But the direct gameplay experience is gonna be feeling much smoother. So I hope people having to play on higher pings outside of the US don't have to deal with insane amount of lag, but just kind of bringing back that old school model of when you're lagging, you're definitely going to be feeling it. And that's one thing they try to alleviate with the re networking model within Halo Infinite. But now it's kind of got a little bit more old school. We're like, yeah, if you're playing 150 millisecond ping, 200 millisecond ping, 
you're gonna be missing some shots. But from my experience, I'd say it's been a great update, but of course I live in North America in a popular area where I usually get about 30 millisecond ping, so things have been feeling great for me, but I just feel bad for the people outside of the US having to deal with these issues now. Yeah, technical updates are great, but they're kind of boring, and what would you do with it? You just play the same content you've been playing for the last eight months now? No, we actually have some new content to jump in, especially when it comes to squad battles, one of the most popular modes and one of the, my favorite modes within the game. Brought a bunch of new maps into it, and I think this is a great way to bring this networking update because because if it's just just a networking update it'd be super boring but now you have new content to jump in and play and experience this new stuff it's gonna be fantastic it really gets people excited to jump in and play it like myself now a great thing that 343 did with this update with these new maps is that they one made the highlighted players of squad battles and if you look inside the game list it's all the new content and they removed all the old maps from the game now i know some of you might be being a little upset and like oh man my favorite map was removed from the game uh, i did read on reddit from a 343 community member that it will be returning probably next week this is just a way to get people to jump in to play the new content which is fantastic as 343 has had that issue previously like one with the snowfire map which i never had a chance to play because it just kind of threw it in the team slayer and you had like 40 maps in the game right that it would be unlikely for you to actually play the new map during the time that it was in rotation. And the same thing happened to the King of the Hill refresh as well when they brought in all the new maps or at least vanilla maps to expand the playlist that you weren't able to play really any of the newer stuff just because all the old stuff was still in there and they didn't weigh the new stuff properly. So then I jumped in and played for like two hours and got like one new map not that exciting. I do want to say that some of the Halo 4 maps that are brought into the game are just fun to play with, like Perdition was a great map, putting out in the Halo Infinite plays great as well, but some of the rounds can be real fast when it comes to one flag CTF. Oh, give me a little Warhawk, yeah! Oh, good that flag. Oh, no, 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 I'm getting shot! Ah, teammate, help! Go! Let me deliver the hope! Yeah! And with all the maps within squad battles being either remakes or repurposed maps like Behemoth being put into the game now, which is the first, I think, Halo Infinite map that's been put into squad battles. And it actually plays out rather well, where on Behemoth, you have some high action with that map. You're not like looking for players anymore. Literally, as you spawn, you're like, okay, let's get into it. Get him out of here. You too. Yeah. Yeah. Fist of Fury! Ugh. I'm loving the action on this map, it's actually not too chaotic. It feels like the pacing is kind of right on point. Like, I'm not having to search for people to find to get into a gunfight with, which is something I kind of normally feel when I'm playing on Behemoth. And I know I made a previous video on this, but the Headlong remake just looks absolutely incredible. Which kind of transitions me into a talking point I've seen a lot of people in the community bring up is that 343 is relying a lot on Forge content with Halo Infinite. While these Forge maps are amazing, basically dev quality content and the functionality and like the performance on them are really good as well. There is that visual fidelity that you can really only get in a dev made map. But as we have stated previously on the channel here that 343 are looking to move on beyond Halo Infinite into whatever the next Halo project is. And right now they're kind of going to more of a sustaining kind of model with it. We're just kind of keeping the player base active and happy at the time. So I'd rather see that dev work being put into whatever the new Halo experience is rather than trying to create new content and new maps and modes and things like that that would be very dev intensive into Halo Infinite which might really not be the best use of your time. I mean 343 are leveraging these forgers really hard like honestly like they should start being considered being contracted pay work because of the amount of effort and time that goes into these maps that literally goes in the matchmaking for the general public to enjoy it's effectively a brand new map. It's the Forge community that's keeping this game alive right now. So whenever there are Forge updates with the game, yet again, they might not be exciting, but they have implications that might come back to you as a matchmaking player. Ultimately for me, if it's new content, a new map, or some kind of new mode to play in, if it's made through Forge, if it's made through devs, Whatever it is, if it's new, I'll jump in and play it because I like playing new stuff with Halo Infinite. Major part of this update was the sandbox changes. And guys, I gotta first just tell you right off the bat, the commando is cracked now. Can I counter snipe this fool right here? I mean, I'm putting some work in. I, I literally counter sniped a sniper with a commando right there. Okay, okay, there we go. That's the commando. That's looking pretty good. I mean, I, I don't want to say it after like the first game on, but I mean, 
I'm just saying, I feel like the Commando might be back. Twitch streamer Accelerate made this old and new comparison about how the Bloom works now in Halo Infinite. It seems like it goes to that Max Bloom a little bit slower, where the older version, the Max Bloom would hit much sooner, making this weapon much more effective over range, where you can really kind of do that tap mechanic that you had when the game first launched with the commander which was really good and now it actually plays out like how this weapon should as more of a mid-range precision fully auto type of weapon like i find myself thirsting for the commando off a of spawn i wasn't doing that previously the gravity hammer receives major buffs as well as you can see this is what happened pre-patch with the gravity hammer basically no physics happening with it this is something that's been plaguing the game since the launch of the game when it comes to having some fun physics with the gravity hammer but now when you go and you swing things well yeah they act as a gravity hammer should utilizing gravity to throw things around so i'm super excited about being getting a chance to jump in and play with this gravity hammer seeing this also makes me think possibly griff ball might be returning in matchmaking for halo Infinite because that was the biggest issue the reason why we really never had griff ball within the game is one we had to have a proper mode for it and two it was that the gravity hammer just didn't have the quite the same physics which were needed for the more meta mechanics when it comes to that type of mode so forgers get on it we need griff ball in the game now that the gravity hammer works but not everything is fantastic right here min bliss showcases that now with the recent update that the skewer is not exactly working as it did previously as you can see right there Missing shots he would normally would land in red reticle range just because of how the new networking model works within Halo Infinite. So either the 343 needs to completely change the projectile speed of the skewer or maybe increase the aim assist, bullet magnetism, whatever it is, something clearly needs to change because a shot like this should have landed, but then it didn't. Of course, this is Mint Blitz playing, which he might be playing on 150 millisecond, 200, 250 millisecond ping. So this could be also a ping issue, but this also, again, an example of why lag composition is kind of needed within shooters nowadays, especially for people outside of popular regions. And just for a fun thing on the side here, guys, Weapon lowering is now fixed within Machinima mode, so now you can actually do your Machinimas if you'd like. Now all the other buffs and nerfs within the game made sense to me. The one I really was hoping for was the Plasma Pistol to get a better magnetism when it comes to its charge shot. I feel like that's completely useless within this game as it's very easy to strafe away from. And I'm not talking about like Halo 2 levels of like noob combo and stuff like that, but Halo 5 seemed to work 5, Halo 3s I really enjoyed as well, but Halo Infinite's charge shot, it really does feel pretty much useless at this point with the lowering of the fire rate of the plasma pistol as well. I feel like overall it was a nerf that really didn't need to happen and made the weapon very ineffective. Now one of the most concerning parts about this entire update was the switch from Arbiter which was their internal anti-cheat when it comes to Halo Infinite to now easy anti-cheat a much more industry standard type of thing. Again this could just be a feature that since easy anti-cheat is a known product that is very well versed and has tons of features I'm sure within it to help fix Halo Infinite's cheating problems that are out there that since they're moving away from Halo Infinite they don't have to focus so much on updating their internal one just focus on the easy anti-cheat but it does come with some trade-offs. So Asia brought up that Easy Anti-Cheat in Halo Infinite runs a system level driver on Steam, as well as a service level hook into Microsoft Store, though it can detect bugging software, but not all are picked up, and as well as telemetry events are sent to Epic Games every 10 seconds or so. But the biggest concern here, saying that 343 has literally removed all kinds of code obfuscation, making the game easier to reverse engineer, which is good for modders but better for cheaters which is certainly concerning because one of the most popular games that uses easy anti-cheat is apex legends and this recently happened in a tournament I'm getting hacked i'm getting hacked bro, i know i know it's true can you play the game bro I, i'm getting hacked i know but can you play can you play it yeah but I, i'm it's cheating the fuck i know i know it's true. i know i know what like what no but is but, it fucking up your game yes i can see everyone like i'm you need to leave you need to leave you need to leave i, I didn't leave the game right yeah, yeah I'm game. leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Oh, like, what the f- Admin's down. Nick, admin's down. Nick, admin's but, down. Admin's I, I left, admin's I left. Down. Yeah, yeah, shoot now. I, I'm, I'm cheating, I'm cheating, I'm cheating. I'm, I'm fucking shit, I got aimbot, I have aimbot. Oh, no. Uh, you gotta leave the game, you gotta leave the game, bro. You gotta out, leave bro. the game. I, I'm, I have aimbot right now, I literally have aimbot. Leave the game. So, Raven, tell them I have aimbot right now. Okay, wait, no, I'm back. I'm cheating. No, I'm- 
I can't shoot. I can't shoot. It keeps literally going on and off. Check for, check for Moby. Check for Moby. Easy Entity did respond saying we have investigated recent reports of potential RCE issue within Easy Entity. At this time, we are confident that there is no RCE vulnerability within Easy Entity being exploited. We will continue to work closely with our partners for any follow-up support needed. So could it be just like an Apex issue and how they implement Easy anti cheat Will that come over to Halo Infinite? Honestly, only time will tell. If you guys enjoyed the video, a like is always appreciated and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.